Victory Studios in downtown Little Rock. This is Capital View. And good Sunday morning to you. Welcome into Capital View. I'm Jay Burr. Unemployment in Arkansas could hit 17%, all because of COVID-19. And the PUA website now facing, well, just a few complications. Joining us now to talk about this, Secretary of Commerce, Mike Preston, uh, from right outside the Capitol there. Boss, uh, we, we certainly appreciate the time. How are you? Uh, we're doing all right. You know, it's been a, it's been a long few days, and uh, hopefully we can get everything uh, uh, working smoothly again. Uh, I, I guess just, let's let's just kind of dive right into it here. Uh, it, it broke out Saturday or, uh, or Friday night, rather, and you guys kind of had to, to sort of throw something together there Saturday morning or afternoon. I, I guess what what happened with the PUA website? What are we looking at? Kind of what's the status of everything right now? So we were notified of a, a potential um, uh, data incident uh, where uh, someone you know obtained access into the site. Um, so when we were notified of that, we immediately had to shut the site down uh, and start an investigation uh, using our, our cyber insurance that we have. So uh, bringing in a, a forensic audit of it to see, uh, you know, if in fact information was breached, uh, what the issue was and what we need to do to correct it. So uh, rather than leaving any potential information out there, uh, we brought the site down uh, and be immediately began troubleshooting and, and beginning that forensic audit. And I guess it might still be too early to tell, but do, do we know or have an idea of, of maybe who it was? Was it one of the applicants? Was this somebody just outside uh, of the PUA system altogether? Uh, what, what kind of information are we talking about, too? <laughs> Yeah, we're we're investigating. A lot of it's too early to tell and know for sure. And I know we've had to do, to uh, you know turn over a lot of information, uh, you know, to the appropriate authorities to make sure that they can investigate. So having them in a third party is is the the route that we're we're wanting to go. But um, you know, we want to assure everyone out there that you know might be concerned that the, the site's down. There's no one else who's going to have access to it. Uh, we'll go through that process. And if there was any breach, we'll notify those individuals, uh, and we'll use that that cyber insurance that we have as a state. Uh, uh, to, to handle any claims or process any information that might be out there. Now, now I guess with the site being down, I guess the, the next natural question is, does this hold up the process of, of getting that PUA money out? Because it's, it's been a process yeah. to, to even right. get to this point as it is. So we're hopeful it's not going to impact that process because even though the site is down, we are still doing the things, uh, you know, from a computer programming standpoint that we need to in order to uh, finish building out the site to hopefully get payments out. Now, what the, is different is that uh, if you're an applicant, you can't go in and access the site right now, uh, but, you know, you can always call, uh, you know, our hotline or offices and talk through it. But if you've already applied, we have your information. We'll send a communication out if we need any additional information or there are potential issues. So we we don't see that really impacting. Obviously, we've got a lot of our IT teams and folks who are working on uh, the issue that, that's occurred over the weekend, uh, but we still have a, a folks who are dedicated to continuing the build out of that site so we don't miss any time in terms of getting those payments out. Uh, and I guess let's just get into the site because I know there's there's been several other states uh, in the country and some of the ones that are surrounding that that are putting payments out or, or at least on the brink of doing so. And, and I guess without getting too into the weeds of, of all the IT that's involved, uh, I guess for, for the state of Arkansas, what has taken so long to, to get this site run into and to, to potentially get this money out to, to those that need it? Well, and I would remind folks that, you know, this is, uh, in some states are getting money out. The vast majority are kind of about where we are, and that's in the intake of application process and, and not sending out payments. We're, we're still hopeful that sometime uh, the, the week of the 18th, this coming week, that we'll be able to start processing some initial payments and getting funds out. You know, you, you look at when we received the guidance from the Federal Department of, of Labor after the CARES Act passed. This was, you know, a few weeks after the CARES Act passed that we actually received the guidance. And the guidance was to build a brand new system from the ground up to account for an individual, an employee that has never been accounted before in unemployment. So building this from, you know, essentially from scratch, that's been a partnership with uh, the uh, Department of Finance and Administration, Department of Workforce Services within Commerce, and then an independent uh, third party contract to get this built as fast as we possibly can. So, you know, obviously there's the need for speed, but as we, we see with this, we also want to be safe and secure with people's information and making sure that it's not vulnerable to attacks. Uh, and we want to, you know, 
we don't want to jeopardize, you know, a, a compromise, you know, uh, integrity of the system uh, for speed. So we're trying to have that balance out there. And a lot of states are in that same boat. The states who maybe are, are a little bit ahead are ones that maybe have had a recent, um, you know, some type of a uh, natural disaster and they had a, a big influx in their unemployment claims and they've had to go out and build a new system. We haven't had to build a new system in Arkansas. Our, you know, our existing system is, is a few decades old. This is a brand new system that we're having to build from the ground up. But we're optimistic that we're going to get this thing running and get payments out just as soon as possible. Now, I know part of the issue, too, was was having this newer system communicate with the current system. Uh, it, is there any compromise with, with sort of, I, I guess, old-fashioned unemployment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the traditional unemployment in that system is fine. Uh, you know, the the, uh, the talking of the systems is something that will eventually occur. But as of right now, that was not in place. So that's not uh, an area that we were worried about a breach. Uh, I want to switch gears with you here just for a moment here while we got uh, just a couple of minutes left. Uh, state forecast numbers actually seem to come in uh, a little better than I think what was mm -hmm. being forecast uh, sort of uh, some of that during some of that what we thought was doom and gloom. Uh, I kind of elaborate on a little bit and I guess would it be safe to say that the state is in a good position or is it still kind of uh, we're sort of wading through some choppy waters? Oh, obviously, we're still in some choppy waters, but you know some of the initial numbers look good. Obviously, we had a, a revised budget forecast, but uh, beating some of the uh, the projections there on, on, on revisions is is always good and, and kind of what we want to see. And we're hopeful in the fact that we didn't have to to shut down and, and shelter in place like a lot of other states that allowed. You know, we're estimating anywhere about a hundred thousand people to stay employed, continuing to receive paychecks. Uh, that's helped out quite a bit. And then what we're seeing too is in some initial uh, sales tax projections there that you know maybe people were out spending funds at the uh, you know their grocery store or Lowe's and Home Depot uh, stocking up on things so you're seeing people still spend money and hopefully now that we've got some restaurants and things back open uh, people are going out in a safe manner and being able to spend some funds and now now just kind of circling back around to, to the PUA fund where we're hoping to see some checks out this coming week uh, are, are we looking at paying those in, in full bulk for the, the full time that, that folks were unemployed or is this going to be kind of staged out uh, kind of bi-weekly or however you guys decide? So we'll have an initial payment uh, that will be for whatever their, their set amount is for that week. And then once we uh, do that initial one, that second week is when we'll be able to process all the back payments. So that, that second week uh, check for uh, individuals will be the really big one that they're looking for. All right, uh, Mike Preston with the, uh, the Secretary of Commerce. Uh, boss, we certainly appreciate it. We know you're, you're real busy right now having to deal with a lot of stuff, and we certainly do appreciate the time, and uh, you know, we'll do it again soon. All right, Jay, take care. All right, appreciate you. Well, will fans be able to cheer their favorite teams in person come September? After a quick break, we talked to Arkansas State's athletic director about fall football. Yeah, bringing sports to the cap. You're watching Capital View on Sunday morning. Man, that tastes just like watermelon. That is neat. Oh, give me that can, girl. I need some more pep in my step. You're over peppy. There's a line between obnoxious and peppy. <laughs> Ooh, cold. Red Bull Summer Edition Slush. Solid, solid, solid. Attention Conway land buyers, developers, investors, and cattlemen. Rolling Hills Ranch and Equipment Absolute Auction, Thursday, May 21st at 11 a.m. 740 acres located in Conway, Arkansas. With a 2,000 square foot home and 40 by 80 barn. Excellent deer and turkey hunting. Offered in six tracks and combinations. And every track is selling regardless of price. Also selling a John Deere tractor, cat dozer, farm implements, and more. Download the Wilson app and bid today. Uh, solid, solid, solid. As a waitress, you're running all over the place. Well, if you have a four or six hour shift and you're in pain the whole time, that seems like an eternity. I was just aching. My feet were throbbing. I was just genuinely hurting. I kind of lost hope. And then I saw the Good Feet store and I decided to stop in. When I went in there, that's when everything changed. My name is Kristen and that's my Good Feet story. See for yourself with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. Be debt free. Dial star star 33. You know who to call. Honey Law Firm. Be debt free. Dial star star 33.
Improve the beauty and safety of your home while increasing the value, too. Bill's Fence Company installs all types of residential fencing, such as iron, wood, chain link, and vinyl. We also install gate operators and access controls. Put your tax refund to work for you. Call Bill's Fence Company for your free estimate. KARK 4 News is sponsored by Ferguson's Furniture. I have been waiting on this. Yes, ma'am. Oh my gosh. So they literally have like little Reese's, little bitty pieces of Reese's. Reese's oh. pieces <laughs> and the pieces of Reese's. <laughs> Reese's overload blast. You're watching Capital View. Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Welcome back to Capital View. College football is still a few months away, but it's at the forefront of everyone's minds now, especially here in the South. And joining us now is Vice Chancellor of Athletics for Arkansas State, Terry Mahajer. Uh, and boss, we, we certainly appreciate the time. We, it's it's got to be kind of odd uh, having a sports guy jumping on the uh, political scene here. Um, but let's, let's get into it here. I, I guess initially... Do we know yet what things could potentially look like in terms of just the fan experience, uh, things like that yet? Well, we're putting together a continuity plan for our chancellor and for the campus. And I'm, my, my task is intercollegiate athletics, which is very vast, as you can imagine. Obviously, all the components on campus are very important. We're dealing with, obviously, the safety of the athletes, the uh, third party, TV contracts, multimedia rights, and fans all together and we're trying to put them in a bucket and try to figure out and make some really priorities and, and, and some and some op, some opportunities for safety uh, tips as we uh, move forward on this, you know, unforeseen, you know, virus that we, we really don't know what's going to happen in the next, uh, you know, month or two, but we're, we're going to plan like the stadium is going to open up next week, and, and uh, we'll, we'll ease up as things open up in the, in the, uh, as the governor tells us to. Now, is there any concern? I know uh, the California state system has already declared, you know, we're not having class come fall, and I know that affects some of the Mountain West teams. Uh, now, is, is this going to be a thing, or, or maybe this hasn't been discussed all the way just yet, if, if, if everybody can't play or, or chooses not to, then do we still have a season, even though you guys aren't necessarily a part of that conference? Well, I mean, I, I haven't heard for sure that it's really going to affect the Mountain West. I've heard that the CCA, which is a Division II, Division III conference in California, we're not going to have classes. Uh, but I hear they're trying to walk that back a little bit. Maybe not so fast, my friends. We're <laughs> starting to have classes again. So uh, I, I, that's just what I hear. Um, you know, you know, we, I, I just I don't think that everybody's going to be the same. Uh, you know, we've been through this before, and sometimes you don't have games because of, uh, you know, natural disasters. We saw that and how we were affected by something that happened in Miami, Florida. And uh, there wasn't – the rest of the teams in the league didn't shut down that week, did they? No, they all played. And uh, so we'll see how that's – we'll see how that uh, will uh, be going forward. But, uh, um, you know, we're still – you know, if I had a dime for every time – I said, I don't know, I'd be able to pay off my stadium. So, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I guess in terms of, of dollars and cents, uh, it kind of looking forward here, obviously all the spring sports, uh, albeit maybe for, for a team like Arkansas State, not big revenue generators, still generates some level of revenue. And, and not to be able to have that now, obviously hitting the pockets, as I know that you've taken a, a bit of a pay cut. I know some of the head coaches have taken a bit of a pay cut. Uh, kind of where do... Where does uh, Arkansas State stand? And, and I would assume this, this is kind of something that isn't unique to the Red Wolves. Well, you budget, you budget on your gate receipts for football, and that includes premium seats. That includes, uh, that includes concessions, multimedia rights, your rights fees for TV. And, you know, no matter whether you are an SEC, Big 12, Big 10, uh, your, re your revenue is all relative. You budget accordingly. So if you have a $150 million budget or you have a $40 million, $35, $40 million budget like this, you budget based on the revenues you generate. And that's what you have to do. So, yeah, we're very cautious. And, and the other thing that's uh, challenging is even though we're getting renewals and things are going very well, is that you can't really spend the money pending what happens the, to the outcome this fall. You don't have games, you have to refund. So you got to be really careful about usual, your usual sales cycle, your usual um, budget cycle of spending money that you may not have and, and trying to forecast well. 
And, and I guess, too, how does that sort of affect the, the inner workings uh, of the athletic programs? Well, I mean, I mean, what happens is, you know, we took a we took a major haircut on the NCAA tournament this year, and we lost a lot of revenue, and like just like everybody else did in the NCAA, and so we had to uh, budget accordingly to the end of this year. So not only are we worried about this fiscal year, FY20, we're also worried about FY21, and um, you know, we we had to make some uh, additional budget cuts this week um, and make some. Uh, I, I believe what we call it sound triage decisions on on uh, cost containment, and we're also forecasting for next year on you know everything from recruiting, football, and all that kind of stuff, uh, from soccer to administration, marketing, every every everything is on the table. And I think that I'm, we're not lone wolves, no pun intended, uh, with that in that regards. Everybody in the country is making the same decisions. So I guess right now, though, the million-dollar question is, are we going to see football come this fall, or, or is it could be? Because I know a lot of conspiracy theories have been tossed around. Uh, they make the rounds on social media. Sure. Is this a thing where we could potentially see things maybe start in the winter or even get pushed to the spring season? You know, I think this is where, this being on a political show, I think that's where it gets a little political. <laughs> Arkansas State, I, I, Arkansas State is planning on uh, September 5th start. That's when we play Memphis. That's what we're planning right now. We will we will act accordingly to whatever the state tells us and to whatever the campus leadership tells us. Uh, but as as of now, that's what we're planning on, and uh, you know, that's the only thing you can do. All right, so there you have it. Uh, you, you heard it here first. Football is coming back. No, we're we're just kidding. We're not gonna we're not gonna <laughs> quote you directly on that, but we definitely hope. It comes back for sure. Uh, again, uh, Vice Chancellor of Athletics, Terry Mahajer up there at Arkansas State. Boss, uh, we certainly appreciate the time. Hey, anytime you want to come talk some politics, yeah, hey, come on in there. I'd love to. We can, we can do it. Absolutely. <laughs> appreciate it, boss. Uh, and, uh, and I'll do it because it's my show. Uh, I'll wolves up uh, with you there. Absolutely. Hey, wolves up, my friend. Thank <laughs> Abs you. Absolutely. All right, when we come back, we take a look at your top political headlines. You're watching Capital View on Sunday morning. For more than 30 years, Superior Senior Care has served seniors and their families in the comfort of their own home, promoting independence, peace, and emotional stability. Isn't it time you called for your aging loved one? Come and enjoy a new experience in shopping for your home. At Aladdin Rugs and Home Decor, we have over 5,000 rugs in the latest colors and styles. Bring your pillows, your pillow shams, and sizes. We will help you select the perfect rug. We're number one in customer service with 15,000 square feet of rugs, unique home decor, wallpaper, and flooring. Remember, buy today, take it home today, and save. Why wait? We all make more than 35,000 decisions a day. Most are small, but some can be life-changing. When it comes to taking care of yourself, the most important choices can be hard to make. Like having a tough conversation instead of ignoring a buddy's call. Or being there for support, not assuming things will just get better. Make the decision to be there for the veterans in your life, for your community, for yourself. Learn more at BeThereForVeterans.com. Sold it, sold it, sold it. Attention Conway home buyers and real estate investors. Absolute Real Estate Auction. With a custom built two story estate home situated in Conway's exclusive Fairways at Centennial Valley Country Club Subdivision. With a 7,000 square foot main house, 1,700 square foot guest home, outdoor kitchen, entertainment area, custom built pool, basketball court, and two double garages. Sell regardless of price, Wednesday, June 17th at 2 p.m. Download the Wilson app or go online at wilsonauctioneers.com. Uh, sold it, sold it, sold it. More than 90% of U.S. nursing homes have been cited for federal health and safety violations. Violations that may have put your loved ones at risk. Conditions such as broken bones, head trauma, bed sores, or injuries from unexplained falls may be the result of improper supervision or neglect. If your loved one has been injured while residing in a nursing home, call Rainwater Holt and Sexton. Anywhere in the state, dial 8-888-8888. 
When you call Superior Senior Care, we'll tell you more about our registry of caregivers who are trustworthy, experienced, and compassionate to your family's needs. Call us today for your free in-home consultation. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Welcome back into Capital View. Lawmakers approved a rules change on Friday to allow lawmakers to vote while away from Washington during this pandemic. Democrats approved the rules change will significantly change House conduct business or how they conduct business. Local lawmakers give their reaction to the change. We're just protecting our members and protecting their loved ones and protecting their constituents. Really unfortunate. It's also unfortunate that she wants to change the way that uh, an institution like Congress votes. And, you know, the word Congress means coming together to discuss ideas and make a decision not to send uh, one person up here to vote for 10 other people. And speaking from the Rose Garden Friday, President Trump announced his administration's effort to develop a vaccine for COVID-19, calling it Operation Warp Speed. Mr. Trump named Monsef Slawi and General Gustav Perna to lead the effort and produce and distribute the vaccine. Trump also repeated his timeline objective, saying he wanted a vaccine ready, quote, by the end of the year. Under Operation Warp Speed, the federal government will invest in manufacturing all of the top vaccine candidates before they're approved. So we're knowing exactly what we're doing before they're approved. That means they better come up with a good vaccine because we're ready to deliver it. And President Trump stressed that military resources will be used to help deploy the vaccine across the country. Governor Asa Hutchinson announcing on Friday, Arkansas open for business. All retail shops will be open come Monday and Friday, lodging in state parks reopened. 71% of all lodging reservations have been made by in-state residents. And officials are saying that the numbers aren't too far off from where they were this time last year. Governor Hutchinson hoping that with more access to state parks, that will have a trickle-down effect for small business. And it illustrates that tourism is the second leading industry in Arkansas. And there's so many of our small businesses that are dependent upon this kind of uh, commercial activity, utilization of our state parks. And so we're pleased with this. The East and West Summit Trails at Pinnacle Mountain State Park also opened up on Friday. So make sure you get out there and enjoy that weather pending, obviously. Arkansas currently at almost 30,000 tests this month, so still a ways to go to get to that 60,000 goal, but the state is well on its way. Officials have announced some other means to ramp up testing where appropriate. UAMS and Baptist Health hospitals have begun screening all incoming patients, and all hospitals are actually encouraged to do the same. Also, the Community Health Centers Association has announced they will amplify their testing capability from around 200 currently to 2,000 per week going forward. The Department of Health is assisting them with supplies towards that effort, also ensuring hospitals across the state have the supplies they need as well. The state receiving a donation of the drug Remdesivir to help treat patients with more respiratory issues. They have enough for 50 patients in the state. And on May 18th, a decision on reopening of bars will be made and under what guidelines. Then the big one on May 20th, a decision on team sports will be announced. That is a question that we have gotten a lot of inquiries about. Well, Ford employees returned to work Monday in Kansas City. On Friday, Missouri Governor Mike Parson stopped by to tour the Ford Claycomo plant. Workers are set to resume a phased reopening to production beginning Monday, May 18th. After his tour, Parson said he feels that employees will be impressed with the safety measures the company has taken. It's pretty impressive when you go through it. Uh, we actually went through it like a normal person would be going through here on Monday morning. And uh, you can see uh, Ford's taking it real serious about uh, reopening up, about the safety side of it. And I want to thank them all for helping with the PPE situation, uh, not only here in Missouri, but across the United States. Now, any other year, buses would be full of springtime school groups and tourists visiting the nation's capital. But this year, well, they're empty. Thanks to the coronavirus, tour companies say their business has dried up and they need help. Washington correspondent Jesse Tenor reports the drivers hope to make their case by driving around the Capitol and down the National Mall to the White House. Hundreds of bus drivers from all 50 states honked their horns in the streets of Washington to get lawmakers' attention. I don't think they, they know how big this industry is. Stephen Ward drives for Mid-American Coaches and Tours in Missouri, but his 800-mile trip to the nation's capital was the only one he's taken in months. My schedule was booked up for March. 
and by the time I got home, everything was canceled. It has completely shut us down. The coronavirus crisis has also forced Cortez O'Neill to pump the brakes on his Alabama business as the cancellations keep rolling in. Actually, I got a call about five minutes ago. A lady already has canceled uh, something for July. So it's, it's, it's hurt us tremendously. The nation's drivers argue Congress already gave billions of dollars to bail out other travel industries like airlines. Now they're asking for $15 billion in the next coronavirus relief bill to help the country's 3,000 motor coach companies. Hopefully everyone will see exactly how essential we are. O'Neill says companies like his aren't just for vacations. They transport athletes, the military, and youth groups from churches. Those are the people that need to speak up for us as well. You know, the airlines are not the only ones that move these people. In the meantime, motor coach companies across the U.S. are facing layoffs and permanent closures as Americans decide when they will hit the roads again. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. And we are back to wrap it up after this. You're watching Capital View on Sunday morning. Uh, solid, solid, solid. Attention luxury home builders and real estate investors. Lake Hamilton Auction, Thursday, May 28th at 11 a.m. Offering three contiguous lots in gated Bayview Estates subdivision. Totaling 403 feet of Lake Hamilton frontage and nine-tenths of an acre of land in Lakeside School District. Offered in three lots and combinations. Bid online with the Wilson Auctioneers app or live on-site at Serendipity Trail in Hot Springs. Go to wilsonauctioneers.com. Ah, uh, sold it, sold it, sold it. Warning, your health care is at risk. Did you know that Arkansas special interests have put patient safety at risk? They have passed a law allowing non-medical doctors to perform eye surgeries in Arkansas, a law that 89% of Arkansas voters oppose. But this November, you can reject this threat to patient safety. Say no to the bill allowing non-medical doctors to perform eye surgeries. This fall, vote no on Act 579. Paid for by Safe Surgery Arkansas. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And that is it for this week's show. Back at you next week with an all-new Capital View. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Stay safe out there.